Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're gonna be talking about the top five safe laners the strongest five safe laners of 7.30 and without further ado honestly let's just hop right into it these are five heroes that i think are really powerful and that the pros think are powerful as well and i'm excited to share them with you but on that note if you guys could like the video and subscribe so we continue to provide you with you know cool content like this and lastly but also importantly there's currently a 50 percent off sale going on for game leap right now if you want to become absolutely broken well what you need to do is sign up to the game leap website down below right now the reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there content that you simply just will never get on youtube we post every single day to the website it's really top tier stuff i'm very proud of what i make over there we also have other creators many of my great friends who are top tier dota players creating guides about different heroes different roles different items skill builds talent builds everything you need to know to get to the next rank so if you feel a little bit lost you're a little bit stuck click the link down below i'll see you guys there and now let's get into the video coming in at number five we have luna now this is the one i'm on the most fence about and honestly, it's really funny on every list. I'm pretty confident about like the top four, but then for some reason, the fifth hero just is a little bit like weary to me. The other hero I think could have been on this list, even could have maybe been top four, is either Monkey King. Yes, Monkey King. I, I actually think the hero is a good safe laner or Juggernaut. Juggernaut got a couple of buffs. He got the Blade Fury spin range. He got that talent at 10, which is okay. And uh, also one more is Weaver. These are just a couple of honorable mentions to consider for your games, as it's good to have a wide hero pool just so you understand what everything does. But let's talk about Luna. Luna was actually one of the heavier nerfed heroes. Moonglaives do less damage. Lucent Beam at level 1 is simply just a longer cooldown. It's 9 seconds instead of 6, which is literally a 50% increase. Pretty extreme nerfs. And yet the hero is still getting picked. The general build people are going right now on Luna is Treads into Mascomanus, into Dragonlance, into BKB, into Shard, or Crystalis into Shard, into Daedalus, and usually after that is something like a Scotty or a Pike, depending on what they think they need to stay alive or, you know, kill people. It, it, it of course, depends on the game. And then what's funny about Luna is, you know, even though that they nerfed the hero, it didn't really change the game plan of the hero at all. It didn't really make Luna much worse of a flash farmer. It made her laning stage, yes, worse because of the Lucent Bean nerfs, but at the same time, you know, like... Early on into the lane, the odds that you're going to use Lucent Beam every 6 seconds, it definitely in some matchups or in some scenarios where you're trading to the death, it's a big nerf, right? It's a huge nerf, actually. It's not even just a big, it's a huge nerf, right? Literally 3 extra seconds is a ton. But in your average laning stage, you know, you might use it to secure the range creep or occasionally beam someone if they overextend, but it's it's not some nerf that's going to completely invalidate your hero that's for sure you know let's say we go back a year in time and you know luna never had a six second cooldown on lucent beam and, and it was always nine seconds i still think people would be like okay it's fine and so yeah just hit some neutral creeps play around the shard get your lucent beam talent of 15 and nuke the ground over and over again and you're gonna do pretty freaking well as luna coming in at number four is gyrocopter Definitely a hero that's win rate surprises me. So you guys might know this, or you might not. The hero has about a 48% win rate on Dota buffs. So you might be saying, okay, speed, so so why would you put it on top carries? I think it's one of those heroes, number one, that people are bad at. Uh, <laughs> like, like it, it's a little bit of a difficult hero, which seems weird, right? It seems weird because it's like, how is Gyrocopter difficult? Well, as I've watched more and more Gyrocopter, what I've noticed is that this hero actually requires an insane amount of in-game knowledge and mechanical skill. And the reason for that is in the landing stage, he has one of the highest base attack times in the, in the game, which doesn't necessarily make it easier to 50-50 elast it, but it does make it much easier to play like mind games with people when you go for like two auto attacks when they can only sneak in one, things like that. Most heroes can never do something like that, but Gyro can consistently on every single creep. So you can play these crazy mind games and, and, and just like last it in a completely different way. And he does have a good animation as well, as well as decent damage. And so he, he's very different in that regard, where if you get good at him, he can be somewhat of like an enigma or a prophet where, you know, not as good as them in terms of denying, but up there. Uh, and so that's like something to keep in mind. Most people don't even consider that. On top of that, homing missile is a very weird spell to use. In the laning stage, most people use it way too late or way too early. They use it too early because it, it will hit the person and not zone them off any denies or CS. And largely, professionals use that as the main utility 
of homing missile in the early games to zone them off the creeps. Right, that's actually most spells. And finally, flat cannon. People are just bad at maximizing their farm. When you're playing gyrocopter, you need to drag waves to creep cams, you need to ask for stacks, and you need to hope you're playing on dire so you can drag the triangle together or like the somewhat triangle, like the, you know, the dire main triangle together and farm it with the flak talents. On top of that, I actually do not like the stats gyro build very much. I do like taking stats uh, sometimes over homing missile, but I do not like the idea. Personally, I really dislike the stats over rocket barrage only because I actually think in a lot of lanes, People could take Rocket Barrage and make the lane completely unplayable for the enemy and farm fine. Not necessarily as fast as maxing Flak, I understand, but sometimes you're against a Tidehunter and you have an Undying and then you just have Flak and it's like this guy has Kraken Shell and you could be completely zoning him off the wave and make this guy's game unplayable. Instead, you have Flak Cannon and it's like, yeah, it's not bad, but it's not great. Next up on the list is Clinks. This hero has shot into the meta. Shot into the meta. Incredible stuff from Clinks. I mean, guys, Burning Barrage is a nutty spell, and I can't believe it. I I've said this a couple times now, but I, I just can't believe it. I tested it in a demo lobby when the patch came out, and I was like, this is one of the most underwhelming spells in the game. It didn't do much damage. But the thing is, it's a farming spell. And when you're in the safe lane, or in the mid lane, honestly, I, I, I know this isn't the mid video, but Clink's mid lane is also just very good. Uh, I would say it's probably just as good as safe lane Clink's. But really, it, this hero's a great laner right now. Essentially, Strafe, it was a good laning spell. It was, don't get me wrong. It was like 40 mana for some attack speed. It's not bad. But at the same time, Burning Barrage gives you the ability to shove the wave, which is something Clink's just like didn't have at all, ever. And now he can farm stacks and shove waves. And so old Klings would have this dilemma where he would want to roam around. He would want to use skeleton walk and move around the map. And he wouldn't want to show that long on creep waves because you're a very easy to kill target for anyone who has dust, right? It's not like Klings has a blink or rage or anything that can get him out of a sticky situation. He generally just dies, right? To like multi-man smoke ganks or just ganks in general. And so old Klings would have to stay on the wave because he would have to auto attack it all to death. And this actually was extremely bad the more and more I think about it. This is a hero that cannot get away and would still have to just sit on creep waves auto attacking them to death. You know how many times this would get Klings killed? More often than you would think. Even if it didn't get you killed directly on the creep wave, it would get you killed 5 to 10 seconds after because of an incoming gank. And yeah, so now Klings is just a flash farmer. If you are familiar with the build, it's generally treads with a wand, with a maelstrom. Some people are literally not even going treads and wand and they will straight up rush maelstrom if they're in good enough of a game, right? If, they're, if their lane is going good enough and then you just farm, farm, farm eat some big creeps and skirmish whenever you hit item timings. Next up on the list is Slark. Slark is annoying. That's how I want to put it. More and more, I really come, I've come to terms with the fact that this hero basically just needs to get tanky and then just like kite in and out of fights. And what I mean by that is his 10 talent, the minus one second dark pact is actually massive. I really do believe that this talent is insane. Some people were skipping it. I think it's absolutely a mistake. I think being able to just like essentially like half the amount of time you have to wait for Dark Pack to be up again, or, you know, even if it's not half, even if it's like 30%, 40%, being able to have Dark Pack constantly going in a fight is golden for Slark. This is what this hero needs. It needs the capability to not get, you know, jumped in the duration where it doesn't have Dark Pack. That's always its biggest flaw. And that's how the hero is meant to be. That's how it's designed. And so being able to take a second off of that is is insane not only for team fighting but also for pushing in waves also for jungling so that was massive the hero also received major buffs in the patch five seconds off at all levels on its ultimate dark pack now does only 30 percent damage to you instead of 50 percent and i would still like to say that i think his shard is probably the best shard in the game now why is it the best shard in the game i think it's the best shard in the game because it just cancels out so many abilities i mean literally i was watching a game yesterday and it was Tundra against LGD, I'm sure you guys probably saw it. And the Juggernaut used Omni Slash, and Slark for 1400 gold cancelled Omni Slash. Not only that, there's many other examples of this. Troll Warlord ulti. Troll Warlord initiates. Hmm. Too bad Depth Shroud comes out, and Troll Warlord hits nothing. Because it just takes people off the map. It literally just removes them. You can't see them. They regen. It's really freaking broken. It just is. It's also like an 80 second cooldown, 
which is honestly not that long for what the spell is. Three seconds of invulnerability that you can just put down on the floor is insane. You just put it down. It's his ultimate, but AoE. Keep in mind, guys, for a period of time, Slurk Ags used to be this. His Ags used to be sort of this. It used to be, it would make your ulti like a 30 second cooldown, okay? And then it would make it AoE. And people would like use it with like Leshrac sometimes. Kind of as a meme though. It wasn't like too legit because it was expensive. It was 4200 gold for for this depth shroud that, you know, caused you to use your ultimate if you wanted to save your teammate. That was the biggest dilemma there. Oh, your Leshrac's getting gone on? Well, I don't really want to pop my ultimate because if you pop your ultimate on Slark to save someone else, you can't use it to save yourself. You also will have a much harder time going in and finishing off targets because you can use your ultimate for that reason as well. So it was not good. And it was triple the gold. Now it's 1400. 1400 and yes this hero's had this shard for a while and wasn't good so obviously i'm just saying that basically the hero has had a great shard but it wasn't necessarily a great hero now it's a pretty freaking good hero with a really freaking good shard and honestly when i when you put these two things together i think you just you know you just get a good hard carry and finally, last but not least on the list, coming in at number one, is your boy. I'm sure you guys are expecting it. It's Sven. And honestly, what's really fascinating to me about Sven is the fact that Great Cleave was basically his only buff. In fact, it was actually nerfed at level one. It went from 30% cleave to 25% at level one. Okay, not that big of a deal, but it gained 10% cleave at max. And I will say that this definitely matters. It's much better for farming stacks. It's much better for killing people with your cleave in teamfights. 10% is definitely a lot when you hit someone for a thousand. That's literally an extra 100 damage onto everyone around you. Definitely matters, especially if you're farming. And on top of that, Stormhammer cast point was reduced, so he throws his stun out a little bit faster. While it might not seem like it matters, it definitely does. Anything like this adds up. But that still doesn't seem like it would make Sven that good of a hero. It's like, really? Is that... Is that it? You know, like, cleave? Is that it? And honestly, guys, like, unless I'm missing something extreme, I feel like the answer is, yeah, that kind of is about it. However, there's a couple things to note. A lot of his fellow hard carries have got it nerfed quite drastically. You know, Luna, even though she was on this list, definitely received some big nerfs. Terrorblade, some big nerfs. Medusa got some nerfs. So a lot of the other meta carries got nerfed. And so Sven who was definitely not bad previous to that, kind of came into the meta. He did. He also got this Silver Edge buff, which I know a lot of you guys are probably like, Speed, you're forgetting Silver Edge. But the thing is, a lot of Sven's don't even necessarily buy it. Even though I think it is an absolutely top tier item, do not get me wrong, I think it is fantastic on Sven, some people don't even buy it every Sven game. Pros, that is. And so, you know, it's like, yeah, it's really fascinating to me. Sven has a 53% win rate on Dota buff. Definitely a top tier carry of this patch. The best carry of this patch. And yeah, that's going to be all for my list. If you guys disagree on any of the 1 through 5, especially on Sven, let me know what you guys think. I definitely think Slark and Sven are a close 1 and 2. Depending on the game, one can definitely be better than the other. It's certainly a situation like that. And nonetheless, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. And I'm out. B -b 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 Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.